2024 is starting to come to a close. And with that, we have now seen absolutely everything the LEGO Ninjago franchise has to offer set-wise for this year. So today with this video, I want to ask the question of how did they do? Overall, with all three of the year's set waves taken into consideration, how was 2024 for new Ninjago sets? This video is a pretty long collection of my thoughts, so if you just want to hear what I think about a specific set wave, there will be timestamps in the description for each of the three individual waves of Ninjago sets for this year. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So straight off the bat, I want to get what probably are the worst of this new season set straight out of the way. These are the Rising Dragon Strike sets, which are the gimmick sets of this season. And these come so close to being pretty alright deals. See, these sets come with the new armored suits of the season, except they have a different mask for some reason. If they just changed out this mask, giving us the figures that we would have had to buy in sets for a bit cheaper, I'd be a lot more positive about these sets. But they don't, and they give us a piece that just makes the minifigure look worse. On top of that, these tiny little, kind of just pathetic dragons just don't really do it for me. It is really nice getting variations of these wolf warriors for so cheap though. These sets will probably be a pretty decent way to army build, but ultimately when this junior set exists, it's kind of already got us covered for army building, I'll be for real. Just in general, these gimmick sets have been really starting to wear thin for me. The only ones I've really liked and wanted to collect in the past like four years have been the course minjitsu sets, but even then they didn't finish the collection for those, so it does still feel a bit pointless. And the real nail in the coffin for me with these sets is the set designer's absolute refusal to just give you the minifigures from the sets in them. Like I said before, if these gimmick sets just had the full armored suits you'd get in the more expensive sets, I would be a lot more positive towards them. Anyways, let's move on to something I feel a lot more positively about. The Master Lloyd minifigure. The Master Lloyd minifigure. In Dragons Rising Season 1, Lloyd eventually accepted training Aaron and Sora, but went out of his way to make sure no one called him a master because he didn't feel wise enough to be called that yet. And then we get the Master Lloyd minifigure, meaning Lloyd's character progression is continuing. Status quo be damned. I love it. As for the actual set itself, coming in at only £8.99, this thing is a great value package. The build is kind of cool, but ultimately whatever. But the fact that for under £10, you get four minifigures is crazy value. Value which is only added to by the fact that all of these minifigures are really, really good, man. This is a great little set. Speaking of amazing minifigures, let's talk about those new armored ninja suits. When I saw those first leaked images, I was a bit mixed on them, but seeing official images and the fact that they have the gold season 11 armor on them, I love these suits. I think they look amazing. The only one I think could look a bit better is Cold Suit, because there's so much orange on the mask and then comparatively barely any on the rest of the minifigure. But I still think overall, this is an incredibly good suit line for the original 6 ninja. But there's my problem with it. There are not just 6 ninja anymore, there are 8. Aaron and Sora do not have these suits. Aaron's version of these suits is literally just his season 1 suit with the new mask on, but Sora doesn't even get that. Sora just full on reuses the season 1 minifigure. I'll just be blunt here, I find it really disappointing that this second Dragon's Rising set wave isn't investing in the new characters in the way the first season did. Aaron and Sora are meant to be members of the ninja team. Why aren't they getting the same treatment in the sets as the old ninja? These armored suits are genuinely incredible, and I'm so upset that Aaron and Sora aren't getting their own versions of them. But you know what new character they are investing in? Wildfire. This new Wildfire minifigure is excellent. I'm a huge fan of this. She looks like she's a lot more integrated into like actual human society now and the ninja team in general, but doesn't give up the more just well, wild aspects of the original character design. I am a huge fan of this. And next to her, we seem to have another line of suits for the ninja. These are the Climber suits. We haven't seen much of them so far, but I think these look pretty great. These suits existing make me slightly less bitter about Sora not getting a new minifigure, because at least the Dragon's Rising Season 1 one still fits in with these pretty well. But the last of the new minifigures we gotta talk about is the villains, which looks so good. Straight off the bat, I wanna mention Lord Raz, who has an amazing new hammer design and awesome purple armor. I'm so happy that Lord Raz is coming back into this second season. It was pretty obvious he was gonna based off of the ending of Season 1, but I'm really happy to see his new design here. I love this character so much. There also seems to be a new character here. I don't think we've seen this person before in Ninjago. You'll never escape the vengeance of your lifelong nemesis, Anna! Who even are you? <sighs> nah, but joking aside, it's great to see Jordana back. Her and Lord Raz partnering up at the end of Season 1 was a really solid cliffhanger to leave the plot on. So, I'm super excited to see what comes of it in the second season. As for Cinder though, he has a really cool design. I love his scarf and I love his new face print. 
Super excited to see what this character's deal is. This dragon set is so sick. Egolt has such a beautiful character design, and the set captures it really well. This dude looks like if the balance itself manifested into a master dragon, what with the black and white color contrasting on the design, and it is so sick. This set is maybe a little more expensive than it should be, but I still think you're getting a good value from this with a great build and some awesome minifigures. Ultimately though, I feel like this is going to be the make or break for many Ninjago fans' opinions on this new set wave. The vast majority of of it is mechs. I absolutely love the Evo mech format that Ninjago has had these past few years, so getting an entire wave of basically Evo mechs is so good. Like, I'll be honest, I know a lot of people are going to be burnt out with the amount of mechs here, but I love this wave so much. Despite all of the criticism I have for it, I am really happy with this wave, just because I love Evo Mech so much, so this whole set wave feels super catered towards me. This is the first time in so long I've been looking at all of these sets and thinking, I want every single one of these now. Evo Mechs are just perfect for me. I don't have much space anymore, I can only spend so much money on LEGO, so getting these small, price-efficient, Highly customizable mechs has just been so good for me as an Ninjago fan. So this wave just feels like Krusty's dream come true set wave. What I love about this Kai mech in particular is not only do we have amazing minifigures across the board and an incredibly well built Kai mech, we also have a little wolf mech to fight in which is like vaguely similarly sized. Ideally I would have preferred the mechs to be both the same size, but villain vehicles never really get much focus in Ninjago sets nowadays which is pretty disappointing to me. So whenever I do see them I always get pretty happy about them. This is an amazing set, I'm so excited for this. I love this Cole mech so much. It's bulky nature, I feel really fits Cole as a character, and I just love the orange. How it's got little translucent bits of it, how it's got hard orange on there, the massive hammer he's got. This mech feels really suited to Cole as a character, and I'm such a fan of it. Also, the minifigure selection in this set is also amazing. A great Cole minifigure, and a really cool Wolf Warrior minifigure. I love this set. Another easy day one buy. I think Sora's mech is the one I'm most excited for though. Although it's wildly inaccurate, I'm really happy to have a cheap way to get Sora's hairpiece. And this set feels just super in character for her. It's very different to her mech from last year, but it still feels like something she would build. Especially with the spinning blade here powered by her elemental power. And this little armored skirt thing they've got going here looks really cool. I love Sora's pink, blue, and white color scheme, and I love the added gold to it. I'm super excited for this mech. I think it looks sick. Another thing I find really cool about this mech is how the torso can spin around. This is such a nice bit of added articulation for these Evo mechs, and I'm super hyped about it. This swiveling torso also makes way for the gimmick of these sets, being that they're interchangeable. Which, I'll be honest, is a feature I am never going to use in a million years. But it's just so fun, you know? Like, I know for kids playing with these, being able to swap and interchange bits of the mechs is gonna be so fun. I know as a kid I would have eaten this up, so I'm really happy to see something like this being integrated. I almost forgot to mention this Lloyd mech, which I am absolutely in love with. It's got a very unconventional color scheme, but I think it feels really cohesive and makes for a cool looking mech. I love the kind of bulky samurai build they've got going here with it, and it has a great minifigure selection. It's great to get Cinder in such a seemingly cheap set, and the Lloyd and Nier minifigures are spectacular. This is another set that I'm going to be trying to get as soon as possible. It's time for the Junior Set Lightning Round. This is going to be looking at the two Junior Sets here, not including that J Mech Battle Pack, which I'm honestly not sure is a Junior Set. And we're going to be starting with Aaron's Battle Mech, which I am not too keen on. It's not the worst set in the world, especially for a junior set. And I really like this piece here. And it's good to get Aaron in such a cheap set along with a Wolf Warrior. But that's about all I have to say about it, really. The build here isn't too impressive, obviously, but it's a pretty good way to get some cheap minifigures, and I imagine it'd be a pretty good pickup if you're giving it to a kid. The other junior set we have here is Kai's Source Dragon Battle, which I really like. Is the actual dragon itself very well built? No, not really. It is a junior's dragon, so you can't really have too many problems with it, but it's not like a set like Jerry from the other year, where it was just reused minifigures and a poor build for stupid expensive prices. We have four new minifigures, which all look spectacular. Some really cool flame pieces, which I believe are new to this wave, although I could be wrong. Two of the minifigures right now being completely exclusive. I am a big fan of this set, and it's definitely one I'm going to be picking up as soon as possible. And that's the Ninjago 2024 January wave. And with the first of our three 2024 set waves discussed, it's now time to move on to the March 2024 sets. In recent years, LEGO's been experimenting with how they distribute their sets for Ninjago throughout the year. And what I mean by that is we've been very used to just getting a January wave at the start of the year and a June wave in the middle of the year, and that's it for the entire year. But in recent years, they've experimented with doing a smaller January wave and a smaller March wave, and then following it up with their big June wave. Or, you know, the August wave if you live in the US specifically. 
I think this new way of distributing Ninjago set releases over the year is really good actually. You could argue it's drip feeding, but I think the individual January and March waves have enough to offer on both ends, at least this year, to where I'm okay with it. It gives me more time of the year where I can be excited about new Ninjago content, and that's always a good thing in my eyes. So yeah, this new way of splitting the years Ninjago sets up, I'm a big fan of it. Now, as for the actual contents of this wave itself, I'm a bit mixed on it. There's some stuff here I really like, and there's some stuff here I don't really like so much. Young Dragon Ryu. Coming in at 15.99, I think this is a pretty good set. If there's any set in the wave I'm most likely to pick up, it's this, because it's small and it's cheap. And while I do really like big Ninjago sets, I just don't really have the room for them anymore nowadays, so sets like this are always really appealing to me. Now, my big issue with this set is that Aaron and Sora still have their Dragon's Rising Season 1 suits. All of the other ninja get these beautiful, intricately designed climber suits right after they get their really high-quality mech suits, while these two are still stuck reusing their Season 1 suits. It's really disappointing to see because, again, Aaron and Sora are supposed to be integral central ninja, with the same same level of main character status as someone like Lloyd. So Aaron and Sora still not getting the new suit treatment whilst everyone else does is very disappointing to me. But there is a silver lining to all of this. Sora's hairpiece is a really good thing to have. This is something I've been wanting since basically the start of Dragon's Rising, and it's good that we finally get to use a Sora hairpiece that's not May's hairpiece from Monkey Kid recolored into pink. I can understand why people are upset about the piece not being as accurate to the show as it could be, but I think especially with this angle, it looks really good. They've definitely made some compromises here, but it gets the idea across well enough, and it looks like a quality piece. So, I'm happy with what we've got here. Also, the Ryu build here is just really nice. It's nothing, like, too amazing, but it's good. It feels like it'd be the right scale for Ryu, especially with that teenage design frame we see in the show. It fits one minifigure well enough, two minifigures even, with the studs there. I like his bladed tail, and this is just like a nice little dragon design. I'm a big fan of it. Also, it's always good to get another one of these wolf guys. I think these are really cool villain designs, so I am happy to get more of these. So yeah, for $16, this is probably the set I would buy out of this wave if I'm going to buy any. I think it's a quality enough set, even if all of the minifigures are reused. The next set we have here, which retails for a full $50, is Aaron's Ninja Off-Road Buggy Car. Absolute mouthful of a name there, by the way. First of all, I just want to say, I think using the dark blue as a part of Aaron's color scheme is really cool. It fits in well with his urban design from season one with the jeans and Keat Orange and Dark Blue. It's just a really nice looking color scheme. My main issue with this set lies in the fact that just like, look at this and then tell me with a straight face, this is worth 50 bucks. This is like a $35 set. Even if it's a bit high of a price still, I could accept this being $40, but 50 $50 for a set this size is a hard enough sell on its own, but also it just kind of isn't very good. Like, the build on its own is very lackluster and not particularly high quality, especially when you compare it to something like the Rock Roader from Dead the Departed. This just feels like a very incomplete and bare-bones build. But what really seals this set's fate for me is that outside of Climber Cole, all of these minifigures are reused. So for $50, you're essentially getting one new minifigure and a really lackluster bare-bones buggy build. Which, I'm fine with minifigure reuse, by the way. I don't think every minifigure has to be a super hard to obtain exclusive. But if the selling point of your set isn't going to be a compelling line of exclusive minifigures, you have to do a good build. And this set fails on both fronts. I love Aaron and Sora as characters. I always try and buy all their sets I can to show LEGO that there is a market for these characters. But I think I'm going to have to pass on this one. This is a very hard sell. Thankfully, I feel a lot more positively about the next set we have here. Kai's Climber Mech. This set retails at $70, which I think is a bit much for a set this size, I'll be honest with you. But unlike the Aaron buggy we just looked at, at the very least, I can look at this and say that this is a quality Ninjago set. I can certainly think it's a bit pricey, but that's just kind of a reality of buying Lego nowadays. At the very least, this is a good set. There's a good line of new minifigures with the new Wildfire suit, the Climber Kai and Jay minifigures, and for those who missed Kai's Elemental Fire mech, another opportunity to get the Jordana minifigure from the January wave. I think this is definitely a quality Ninjago set with plenty to offer. My issues with this set are just rooted in the fact that this one is $70, and this one is $30. Lego, why do you do this to us? I think if this set was priced at $50, it would be a much better sell. But as is, it's a good set, but it's way too overpriced for me to consider. I might pick it up if I see it discounted, but beyond that, I'm passing on this one. I just really hope we don't see any more painfully overpriced sets in this wave. Oh my god! 
This set costs a full $120. Oh my god. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful, intricately designed set that, despite the insane price, part of me is still considering picking up. I love Ninjago location sets, and this might be one of the best and most detailed location sets we've ever received. It's good, but I'm not sure if it's $120 good. This set is comprised of mostly reused minifigures, some from Dragon's Rising Season 1, some from the January wave we just got. But I don't really find the minifigure reuse too egregious, even if this set is stupidly expensive, because look at that build, that is beautiful. The new Euphrasia minifigure looks very good. I'm happy to have a side character like this in minifigure form now, as opposed to like, 10 years down the line when she's long obsolete in the plot. And I like the new Wu minifigure. I don't really see the point of this minifigure existing because it looks incredibly similar to his core outfit. So I feel like that budget could have been better spent like not making a basically identical minifigure. But when you look at it in HD close up enough, it is in fact a different minifigure and it does look good. Even if I don't see the point in it existing at all. <laughs> this set comes in at 1,012 pieces. So in theory, it is worth the price. Like, I can see it's a very dense build that has had a lot of care put into it, definitely more so than your average Ninjago location build. But price per part ratio isn't the only thing you gotta factor in when deciding a set is worth your money. For a lot of people, the factor of whether a set is worth it or not isn't how many pieces are in there, the factor is how those pieces are used. For example, when you compare this to, say, the Skull Sorcerer's Dungeons, which is cheaper by the set than $20, I think you can get a good picture of what I mean. This is a much bigger set with more minifigures that are original to this set in particular, and it is cheaper. Also, this set has 1,171 pieces, as opposed to the Dragon Shrine's 1,212. Yeah, I feel like for most people, this set is more substantial and offers more for your money than the Dragon Shrine. I think it's in large part to this set just kind of using pieces better and being bigger. When most people spend a lot of money on LEGO, they want a big, sizable build. Most people are going to look at this and go, $120 for this tiny build? That just doesn't seem worth it at all. As a last comparison to another set here, the Legacy Bounty is only $10 more than this set. Do these sets look like they should have a price difference of $10? I think this is a great set, but I'd be very hard pressed to answer yes to that question. Overpricing the sets has been a pretty big problem with this whole March wave, and I hope in future LEGO is able to not do that so much. The final set we have here, coming in at $110, is the Shadow Dojo. Now, something I find really funny about this set is that the giant blood moon at the top of it blocks the Ninjago logo on the box. I'm not sure we've ever had a build this tall that it's blocked the Ninjago logo this majorly in a set box. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I can't recall something like this ever happening before, and I think it's really funny. But yeah, I think this is a pretty decent set. It's not the best of these $110 sets we've ever received before, but I think it is definitely a quality Ninjago set. I think the roof detailing on the Shadow Dojo is really cool. I love the wolf face on the front of it. We have a really good minifigure selection here with basically every major villain from Season 2 of Dragon's Rising, with Lord Raz, Cinder, Jordana, and an extra wolf grunt. And we get half of the Climber suit line in this set, getting the suits for Kai, Lloyd, Nia, and Zane. This is a pretty good value for money set. I think if you buy this set, you will not be disappointed with it. I'm on the fence about buying this one. I might if I decide I have room for it, but at the minute, I am not sure if I do. So we're gonna have to wait and see if I buy it. And with all of the March 2024 Ninjago sets discussed, it's time to move on to the final wave of sets we have today. The Summer 2024 Tournament of the Sources sets. Released to tie in to Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2's second part. The how much did all this set you back, Liz? A lot. The first set we have here is Zane's Ice Motorcycle, and honestly, I am not a fan of this one. And that especially hurts to say because I love the cheap Ninjago set. The Ninjago sets that I can jump on without spending the next day telling myself how bad I am with money are the ones that I like the most. Just the nice little ones I can get a few minifigures with, a small build, and not break the bank. I've always liked these sets a lot, they've been my main form of Ninjago set consumption for some years now. This one's disappointing, and it's mainly because there is no villain minifigure in this set. Usually in these kinds of small sets, you get a ninja and a villain. Like, it would not have hurt LEGO to put a wolf warrior in this set. 
And if it was like the 2023 core line where we had a bunch of single ninja sets like this and then we had some smaller sets with a ninja and a villain, I'd be fine with it. But this is the only set of this wave to be below $30. So as this being the only budget set in this entire tournament wave, it falls flat for me. It especially sucks for kids who don't necessarily have the copious amount of funds you need to actually enjoy this wave of Ninjago sets properly. You know, the cheap set where you have a ninja and a villain to fight them with has been a staple for basically every kind of Lego demographic. Especially kids who want a cheap thing of their favorite show to be able to play with. This set doesn't look particularly good. It doesn't have a villain minifigure in it, so I can't imagine it's very good for play. So while it is a nice cheap way to get the Zane minifigure, I guess, you are still getting a worse version of him anyway because he doesn't have the armor. You know, they were able to put a ninja and a villain in this $5 polybag. I don't see why they couldn't have put a wolf warrior into this set. This set doesn't really do much for me, and I don't think it really does much for many people. I think this Zane set is representative of this wave's biggest problem. It is not friendly to budget Ninjago fans at all. You know, after that $10 Zane bike, the cheapest set in this wave is a $50 set. Needless to say, if you aren't absolutely loaded, you are not enjoying this wave whatsoever, man. And it sucks too, because earlier this year with the January Season 2 Dragons Rising sets, they were offering such good value for money, with a Kai set with a big old mech, a smaller mech, and four new minifigures coming in at £22. And they were able to offer a £9 set at the same price range as this car with four minifigures and a cool build. How is it that not even a year later we're struggling to get a second minifigure into a $10 set, man? This wave's biggest issue is definitely its pricing. It is incredibly expensive and you are not getting any value for your money unless you put a lot into it. The next set we have here is the Tournament Battle Arena, which I'm a big fan of. I think the minifigure selection on display here is absolutely incredible, with my favorites being the new smoke form of Cinder, the Evil J minifigure, and finally, a new suit for Sora. I've been complaining about Sora not having a new suit for months now, so I'm so happy my complaints have finally been listened to and we have suits for Aaron and Sora. Absolutely over the moon about this and Sora's suit in particular is great, I really like it. This set has a nice little build to it, there's plenty of stuff here and it feels very dense, but I'm not sure if it's worth $50. The gamers market from 2020 was cheaper than this, had about the same amount of minifigures and the build was ever so slightly bigger. Now mind you, the build in this set is definitely better and I think all in all it's still worth it. Especially if you're a minifigure guy, like, oh my god, there's so much cool stuff here. But I feel like it could benefit from being just a little bit cheaper. Even despite that complaint though, this is a great set and one I will probably be picking up somewhere down the line. The next set we have here is the Ninja Team Combo Vehicle, which is an absolutely clunky as hell name. Like, look, this is a cool build. I'm going to get into what I like about this set in a minute, but LEGO really needs to start streamlining its names again. Back in 2016, the equivalent of this set was called the Ultra Stealth Raider. That's so cool. Nowadays, we're just stock with the most uncreative set names ever, though, like Ninja Team Combo Vehicle or Aaron's Off-Road Ninja Buggy Car. I know we can do better than this, guys. I mean, these sets are still really cool but the names could just use a bit more imagination. Anyways though, this set I find to be pretty cool. I don't think it's nearly as good as the Ultra Stealth Raider from 2016, but I do think this is a worthy spiritual sequel to it. I really like modular Ninjago vehicles like this, and I think the central Lloyd tank we have going here is pretty cool. It's not an exceptional set or anything, but I really like this idea from the Ultra Stealth Raider, and I'm glad to see it come back in a big way. The minifigure selection here is also spectacular with some awesome looking new wolf warriors and four of the tournament suits. This is just a pretty good set. Nothing exceptional, nothing terrible, just a pretty good Ninjago set. One I might pick up somewhere down the line if it's on sale or if I feel like it, but we'll see. The next set we have here is one that I'm just not really a fan of, and not because it's low quality. I have just never been one for Titan mechs really. I like the J Titan mech from Core 2023 a lot, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a big Titan mech fan or anything. Build wise, yeah, this set is kind of amazing. The blades coming off of it is really cool. It's really intricate and detailed with a ton of articulation. If you are a mech nerd, you're going to be all over this set. But this set is only for the mech nerds. This set comes with only one minifigure being Mech Cole. Not to be confused with Mech Pilot Suit Cole. In terms of not only minifigures, but also playability, given that in the set, this mech has absolutely no enemy to stand up against, this set isn't really going to do much for you. This set serves as solely an intricate, expensive, nice looking display piece for older Ninjago fans. So if you're that kind of fan, yeah, you're going to be all over this. But it doesn't really appeal to me, and I'm not sure how much it's going to appeal to Ninjago's target demographic of young kids. Still though, if you are a part of the group of fans this set appeals to, you are in for an absolute all-timer here. Like, oh my god, this is so cool. Next up here, we have the Source Dragon of Motion, who is another incredibly expensive set. So sorry budget fans, you're getting literally nothing this wave. But holy Source Dragon, dude, look at this thing. <laughs> this is the Source Dragon of Motion. 
an $150 set centering around the Source Dragon. Just look at this thing, it's so cool. Raz has this giant ornate throne on top of it with the Gong of Shattering on it. There's little fire dragons surrounding it, much like what Lloyd saw in episode 3 of season 2. This thing is just a huge, intricate, beautiful dragon design with an absolutely spectacular minifigure selection. You get Tournament Kai here, who looks incredible. The new Tournament Aaron minifigure, who, whilst I wish had more blue on him to match the mask, I think is still a pretty okay minifigure. Tournament Wildfire, this amazing new Raz minifigure. Same for Jordana, like, dude, these minifigure designs, incredible. And another Wolf Warrior. I wish these new Wolf Warriors were more army buildable because they look really good, but I guess I'm just going to have to use Bricklink for that. This throne design, as mentioned before, looks absolutely awesome and contrasts against the Source Dragon of Motion really well. It's just a very striking bit of imagery. I really like it. This is an incredible set and one I would absolutely pick up if I had the space for it. Just incredible, incredible stuff here. Great value for money given the build you're getting. Great minifigure selection. Just an all-around amazing set. The final set here is the big one. The big one of the wave full of big ones. The Tournament Temple City. This set comes in at a whopping $250 with 3,489 pieces and a whole 13 minifigures. This set includes Tournament Lloyd, Cole, Nia, Zane, Aaron, and Wildfire. So off the bat, you're getting like half of the ninja team. The new variants of Lord Raz and Jordana. Pale Man from Season 4, which is a pretty big surprise to see him here. This weird golden dude, and then some civilians. So in terms of minifigures, you are absolutely getting your value for your money here. Like, wow. I wish Aaron's tournament suit had armor here, but that's basically my only complaint with this minifigure selection. This is an incredible, ambitious, massive set, which I am partially considering getting. I never usually consider getting these big ones, but I may have to make an exception for this one. It's just so intricate, dude. There is so much stuff here. Another cool thing is that this set connects to the Tournament Battle Arena set we discussed earlier. So if you get both, you get this massive tournament diorama, which looks so cool. If you have the dough to get this set, you are absolutely getting your value for your money with a great minifigure selection and an incredibly beautiful and expansive build. If I can make the space for this set, I will probably be picking it up somewhere down the line because, oh my lord, this is so good. And those are my thoughts on every single 2024 Ninjago set to release. In the spirit of rounding out this whole collection of my thoughts from over the course of the past year, I thought we'd bookend this video with a ranking. You know, seeing as YouTube loves ranking so much. We are going to go through and rank every single one of the Ninjago sets to release in 2024. Here we go. Coming in at the absolute last place in this ranking in the 21 spot, we have Zane's Ice Motorcycle. This set could have been great, but is dragged down by just kind of being really bad value for money. In this set, you get a very lackluster bike build and an incomplete Zane minifigure who's missing his armor piece. For the exact same price as this set, you could get Jay's Mech Battle Pack, which has one build that is pretty good and four minifigures. Whilst this set can't even give Zane one Wolf Warrior to fight. This thing is just a terrible value for money and I generally wouldn't recommend it to anyone. In at the number 20 spot on this list, we have the Rising Dragon Strike gimmick sets, which I'm just going to all rank in one slot because all three of these sets are functionally the same thing with a different ninja. These things get points for all including a Wolf Warrior for the ninja to fight, which is really cool. I think that decision gives these sets some value for money. But beyond that, these things stink. The gimmick stinks and looks stupid. The suits the ninja get in these sets aren't very good. They're just different enough to not be as good as the mech suits, but not different enough to stand on their own like the core spinjitsu suits do. This line of three sets really didn't do much for me. And at the number 19 spot on this list, we have Aaron's Battle Mech, which is quite a bit better than the other two. As a junior set, I think this thing is pretty good. It's a pretty decent value way to get Aaron and another Wolf Warrior. The only issue is, is there is just better value ways to get both of these characters. Like when compared to a set like Young Dragon, Dragon Ryu, there is just no reason to get this mech. Like, yeah, it was a pretty okay value for money set back in January, but now, not really. Speaking of bad value for money Aaron sets, in at the number 18 spot is <gasps> Aaron's Off-Road Ninja Buggy Car. That is the most mouthful Ninjago set name to ever exist. Just a string of completely random words, man. There is no reason for this thing to be called a buggy car. Just pick one or the other. You don't need to use both words. But yeah, this is a pretty bad value for money set. This build is just not big enough to justify being in a $50 set. Nor is this minifigure selection good enough to justify the price either. Outside of Climber Cole, this set is entirely reused minifigures from previous waves. And hey, if the build was compelling 
enough to pick up the slack, it would be fine, but it's not. Just for comparison, LEGO is charging the same amount of money for this set as the other tournament battle arena, which I think tells you everything you need to know about this buggy set. Coming in at the number 17 spot on this list, we have Kai's Source Dragon Battle. Another junior set, but one that I think is pretty good. I do think it's a little bit expensive. We could have knocked a couple dollars off of the price. But the minifigure selection is good, which definitely helps it a lot. At number 16, we have the Tournament Training Ground Polybag, which is just a great and cheap way to get the Cole and Wolf Warrior minifigures for the tournament. Good stuff. In at 15 is the Ninja Team Combo Vehicle, which has a bit of a wonky build in my opinion, but is carried by its really great minifigure selection, being a great alternative to the massive expensive city for a lot of these minifigures. In at 14, we have Lloyd's Elemental Power Mech, which is just a great little set. Really cool build, really great minifigure selection. This thing is just aggressively good. You really can't go wrong with it. Coming in at number 13, we have Kai's Climber Mech. And this thing is just cool, man. A tiny bit too expensive, maybe. But it's made up for by the build being genuinely good and having a pretty good minifigure selection. If you can find this thing on sale, you cannot go wrong with it. And at the number 12 spot on this list, we have Cole's Elemental Earth Mech, which has a great minifigure selection, an awesome build, and is a really good value for money. And the exact same thing applies to the number 11 pick for this list, Sora's Elemental Tech Mech. I have more or less the same opinion on both of these sets. I think both are awesome, but I just ever so slightly prefer Sora's mech for the build, which is why it's in the higher up spot. And at the number 10 spot on this list, basically in the direct middle, we have Cole's Titan Mech. And for Titan Mech fans, this thing is awesome. A set solely dedicated to making the most detailed, fleshed out, articulate Titan Mech ever. If you're a Titan Mech fan, this is your dream set. Unfortunately for me though, Titan Mechs don't really appeal to me too much. Meaning on this very subjective ranking, I can only really put it so high. In the number 9 spot, we have Jay's Mech Battle Pack. This is a great little value set with some awesome minifigures. The build is cool, but kind of whatever, but again, the minifigures more than make up for that. At number 8, we have Egolt the Master Dragon. This set is a little bit more expensive than it should be, I think, but it has a great minifigure selection and an awesome build. Egolt's design is just so cool, man. And at number 7, we have Young Dragon Ryu. This set is as high up on the list as it is for being the cheapest way to get Aaron and Sora, and also has an awesome Ryu build. For all of the reasons I just said, this set is already great value, but you also get an extra Wolf Warrior with them as well. And at number 6, we have the Wolf Mask Shadow Dojo, and this set is just great. It's a great display piece, it's got a great minifigure selection, it's great value for your money. You literally cannot go wrong picking up this set. And at number 5, we have Tournament Battle Arena for having an awesome minifigure selection. The set's a little more expensive than it should be, I feel, but I still think you're getting a pretty great value for your money here with a pretty decent build and an awesome lineup of minifigures. The Source Dragon of Motion is just awesome. Really good lineup of minifigures and an incredible dragon build. This set does such a good job at capturing the scale of Source Dragons in LEGO form. Even just the tiny little dragons flying around it do so much to make this thing feel massive. Awesome set. And at number 3, we have Kai's Elemental Fire Mech, which is a set I absolutely love. For only £25, you get 4 minifigures and 2 mechs. This is easily one of the best value for money Dragons Rising sets ever. If not the best. And at the number 2 runner-up spot on this list, we have the Dragonstone Shrine. Now, I think this set is a bit too expensive. I think it could really benefit from having its price slashed down by about $10 or so. But this set is one of the rare examples where I will recommend the Ninjago set despite it being outright overpriced. Because I think this set has one of the most beautiful builds in any Ninjago set ever. This thing is gorgeous and I recommend it for that alone. And finally, in at the top spot of this entire list, at number 1, we have the Tournament Temple City. I don't think this pick is much of a surprise to anyone because, like, just look at this thing. But, like, dude, the minifigure selection on this is massive and amazing. And the build itself is so gorgeous and detailed, man. This set is pretty expensive, coming in at £220. But if you are willing to put down that kind of money for a Lego set, you are absolutely getting your money's worth here. This thing is awesome. And with all of the Ninjago 2024 sets ranked from worst to best... That completes our discussion of Ninjago's 2024 set lineup. Overall, whilst it hasn't been perfect, I think 2024 has been a pretty good year to be into Ninjago sets. There were a couple stinkers in there, whether it be due to poor builds or poor pricing, but I think the good that we got out of Ninjago's 2024 sets way outweigh the bad. This was a good year to be into Ninjago sets. And I, for one, am excited to see what LEGO has in store for us next year. As always, a massive thank you goes out to my channel members for their financial support of the channel. Their names are listed on screen now. 
And a massive thank you to everyone for watching this doozy of an upload all the way through. And with all of that said, I hope to see you in a future video. Goodbye for now.